Recording the 13th episode could be a concern for the superstitious viewer. And, given that this video uses the fragile hitchhiker module, you'd be right for being a little nervous. I'm Forrester, and welcome to the 13th instalment in my Kerbal Space Program series, No Kerbals Died, the hard mode career where I look to keep our adorable green astronauts alive throughout. This episode is all about the allure of big money. By daisy chaining orbital rescue contracts, in this case five of them, and accomplishing multiple contracts with a single launch, the potential profits are 160 to 170,000 Kerbal currency units, as well as opening up new crew possibilities for the future. But at this stage in the career, that's offset by the risk of using the very delicate hitchhiker module. And there we have liftoff. So the eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed that I was very, very careful in the vehicle assembly building to make sure that the escape system staging was all set. And that's because this is a very vulnerable rocket with that hitchhiker storage container in the middle. We've got a very standard lifter rocket for this. It's what I call the Block 1 Delta Lifter, which is a couple of tall solid rocket boosters. Uh, supported by a skipper engine as the primary engine and then a poodle on top. Thought the payload will give us more than enough Delta V for this kind of mission. Getting ready and solid rocket booster separation. So whilst those two tall solid rocket boosters are on, I'm very very tentative with these type of rockets and because safety is the number one concern, we're not on the most efficient launch profile. So for that reason, as we cruise up beyond 33,000 meters, almost horizontal already. So we have five contracts for this mission. Uh, all five of those contracts are to rescue a Kerbal from low Kerbin orbit. They're very, very lucrative. Essentially, you can pretty much do a launch and have the mission pay for itself by rescuing a single Kerbal. But by daisy chaining them together, we're being a bit more bold and trying to make a bit more cash as funding is the name of the game here. This is called the X-13 CRV testbed, in this context CRV being a crew return vehicle or crew recovery vehicle. As we prepare for our staging, and there it is, main engine cutoff and launch escape system. We're already pretty high up here with this little, essentially orbital tug, which will be the vehicle until we re-enter. The crew return vehicle, um, I will name it the Gaia crew return vehicle, should this mission be successful. Um, and this one has a capacity for six Kerbals rescued, plus a pilot for seven in total. The hitchhiker storage container is, I think, famed for its low impact tolerance. So we've gone completely overboard on parachutes here, as well as having the landing struts for if we're making a hard landing. And here we just circularize the orbit, move to the mission phase. So it does have all of the amenities, there's a docking port attached on the top, as well as solar panels for electrical generation and RCS thrusters as well, as well as more than enough Delta V to be making some orbital maneuvers. It's, um, it's a little bit overkill, but I wanted a design that could be used um, in a few different types of mission, not just low curb in orbit, as we just tweak the maneuver nodes here to make for our first encounter. And there it is, the first encounter. So just going ahead and slowing velocity to the target. Some slight tweaks there with the engines. This is not necessarily the uh, proper way to do it, but it's a very Kerbal way to do it. Close the distance there. So we have five Kerbals as mentioned, uh, their names are all listed in the mission segment here and we'll get a nice little blue dot on them as and when we rescue them. I have clearly sped up a lot of this footage so we're, um, we're actually a few hours into the mission, um, almost three hours into the mission uh, and actually the mission will end up spanning a, a couple of days as we try to make best use of the orbital mechanics for rejoining with the various capsules.
And as we skip across to select our Kerbal, I'm afraid it was a, a night time for the first one, but with the use of the light you can see there, hopping into the Hitchhiker storage container. And there we have it, first Kerbal rescued. On to the next. So I do like these uh, crew recovery or crew return vehicles. Um, they are fairly cheap. Uh, they have got the docking ports, so they can be used for stations. They've got Delta V for making orbital maneuvers. And um, although I would tend to avoid the hitchhiker at this stage of the career, uh, it is very much necessary um, just to get some funding in. And actually, if you're very, very careful with how you launch it, how you land it, that you've got sufficient parachutes, etc., there's no reason why it can't land safely. As we start to get towards our next encounter, and there is Debal Kerman. So the other advantage of these missions, of course, is not just for the fantastic level of funding that you can retrieve, but also for bringing in new Kerbals to the space program. So across pilots, scientists and engineers, having more Kerbals ready to fly is obviously a bonus. And there we have our second Kerbal rescued. As always, if you are enjoying this series, please press the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. It's really useful to see which videos subscribers are enjoying and helps me to plan how much time to spend on future content. So definitely something to consider. We spin around a few orbits there as we catch up with our next craft. So NASA actually have uh, a few different or have had a few different designs for crew return vehicles. Um, sometimes they call it the assured crew return vehicle. Essentially, the, the thought process is that if you are sat on the International Space Station and you have some kind of an accident or incident like a medical emergency, you'd have something attached that you could hop on board and get back down to Earth. Uh, for the most part, the Soyuz Russian spacecraft have been used pretty much to that end, um, but there were lots of ideas about actually having a, a module attached that would allow NASA to do that, and sometimes with potentially a reusable module. So there, there were some thoughts of using Apollo-style capsules, which is similar to kind of what I've got on for this mission, um, but actually lots of space plane designs and cool looking space plane type options. Um, definitely worth having a look and googling things like the uh, X-38 or the HL-20. Um, some very very interesting designs there and actually as we get later into this career I'm sure I will be experimenting with some such designs. As we close in on Hoodbart, who will be our fourth rescue and fifth crew member on board. And we'll just hop up and put him in the main capsule so there's room in the hitchhiker for our final catch, which will be Clawler, 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 Kerman. So just tweaking the maneuver nodes here for our final intercept. Just looking to get it as close as possible there. So we'll be coming straight back down to Kerbin after we've rescued all of these Kerbals. Um, but there's more than enough Delta V and RCS fuel on here that actually, should we have a space station in orbit in the future that we'd wanted to take these Kerbals to, could easily have done that. As he makes his way to the craft and on board. So everybody is safely on board. If I'm honest, this isn't the part of the mission that I was most nervous about. Um, I am most nervous about the landing for these. Because that hitchhiker module has such low impact tolerance, as we make our descent burn and jettison the second engine, the hitchhiker module has such low crash tolerance that actually you really need to cushion its landing. So lots of parachutes and the two uh their four sorry landing legs to help cushion the blow i've got two heat shields on here so there's a heat shield underneath just to protect the hitchhiker module there's also a heat shield underneath the command module 
just again for more launch abort options and more abort options. Clearly, with four Kerbals in there, we do not want to be going down that route at the moment. As we continue to slow the craft, deploy the first drogue shoots. And then deploy the rest of the shoots. You can see a lot of parachute options on here. And then it's just a case of cruising down from altitude as we cruise into sunrise. Should be a nice gentle splashdown. I've got the lights on, got enough power for it, so why not? And there we have it. Looks like mission success and should make some good money. And so, as the 13th episode concludes, I happily leave you with the ubiquitous closing remark for every mission in this series. No Kerbals were harmed in the making of this video.